First of all, uh, thank you so much uh, for the imminent introductory, Professor Song Kyung Park. This is my pleasure and honor to be here. And once again, humbly, I would like to apologize uh, for the little bit being late, which is not in our culture and capacity as a being a diplomat. And I am apologizing in front of you because that it was some technical issue that you could not find your campus. That was the story behind. Another issue that this is uh, for the students, I would like to pay your attention because today we have a jewel in our uh, auditorium, which is Professor Song Chul Ho, which is playing imminent uh, uh, importance in the public diplomacy between our countries. I think with Professor Song Chul Ho, Korean Georgia relations are becoming more closer and closer. Without him, I don't see that we could succeed so much. And thank you so much. I think that uh, the, the professor has visited, actually, he was ambassador. Nan concurrent ambassador uh, from Ukraine and he visited our country and working there uh, and plus he fell in love with our part of the world. It's not only about the Georgia, it's about Caucasian region and uh, I think that there is uh, much more to see there because uh, the vast uh, pages of history behind us which I'm going to today to talk while being in front of the uh, talking about the uh, European integration process which is one of the core dimension to us but uh, I will uh, uh, be very uh, focused on the Georgia's history pages because it starts from there and then I will speak with our modern uh, relations with European Union and plus of course with our bilateral relations with the Republic of Korea and Georgia itself. Once again thank you so much and with your permission I will start my uh, humble lecture uh, from the first pages of our history. Thank you. It should move. Uh -huh. Okay, I thought that this is... Okay, this is why uh, I'm starting from the history pages, because for you, I think that there is a, some of you, maybe you already made the research regarding who we are, what is Georgia, uh, why Georgia, why we are here, and so on and so forth. But this country has the huge history behind it. We are counting around 8,000 years. Georgia is the old nation and young nation together. And why these two uh, notions together? Because we are counting 8,000 years history, but on the other hand, we are counting 27 years after the collapse of the USSR. And we are young as well, in some dimension. And that's why that this, uh, some of the pictures that first Homo sapiens, uh, after the African, continent has been found in mid, almost two million years ago in Georgia and so. Which means that we are calling ourselves the first Europeans. That's why that Georgia's major strivings to become the European part of the European family, because we are there in our minds, but in practical terms, we are still fighting to get there. And uh, I would like to open up some uh, embassy work uh, related issue, which is uh, directed at me and my counselor. We are working daily basis with your National Museum of Korea to next year, if it's going to be successful for us, we can have the Georgian National Museum exhibition here, which will be one of the team, will be the theory how the Homo sapiens went to the European uh, continent in Georgia, and after that, how the uh, development uh, has been passed even in the Asia, in Central Asia, and how it went. It will be very interesting. I cannot talk in details, but it will be, I think, for the all the Korean uh, population, very interesting exhibition because it's not only uh, show the uh, Georgia, it will show the civilization of humanity. On the other hand, on the slide, you see how the professor already mentioned in his introductory that Georgia is the country of the winemaking. 
I will not focus right now about this issue because on my slides I will talk a little bit later regarding our wine because I need some time <laughs> to speak about this issue. Also, uh, we are counting our history uh, why 8,000 years ago and who calculated this uh, time frame. Because when it comes to the Korea itself, you have 5,000 years old history, but we cannot tell anybody that is real 5,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 or 7,000. It should be based on some materials, it should be based on some researches, it should be based on some uh, articles or it should be based on something, which uh, we are starting counting our history. This how we see the Georgia's development and Georgia's itself, how it has been uh, born in this planet, it comes from the Kolkhi civilization, which is the very, uh, I don't know how you far know the Greek uh, mythology, but in the Greek mythology there is a, a golden fleece story, which is uh, the, I think that maybe you uh, saw some Hollywood movies, when the Jason is searching uh, uh, some Medusa Gargona and some other obstacles and getting some uh, fighting with beasts and in the end getting the golden fleece. Like this is very well known legend, maybe some of you, you don't know on here on this planet, but it's in the worldwide known story. And uh, this is part of the, because that everything what was happening in this legend, it is in Georgia. And this Queen Medea, I think, uh, who, who has fell in love with this uh, head of the Argonauts, the Jason, at that time, she was the queen of the uh, Georgia, called his uh, time, which is the western part of the Georgia. And uh, uh, because of her, she poisoned her children and then uh, gave up uh, her uh, throne and uh, fell in love with the Jason and ran out from Georgia with the Golden Fleece. Something, the story like this, but it's very interesting that at that, that time, the Georgia has a medicine uh, which you could not meet in any other parts of the world. It was so developed place uh, that uh, that's why that, uh, we think that our history started from there because it, it, it has been connected with the gold making and uh, art and everything all together, including with the medicine, because the, you cannot poison the person if you don't have the developed uh, medicine with you. Uh, that's how we are calculating our years. Just, uh, sorry a little bit, the history classes is always a little bit boring, but on the other hand, it's very important as well to understand deeply uh, why Georgia is fighting today to be part of the European Union and the family. And this is very important like to know from the scratch who we are. And also, Georgia is the country like the Korea as well, because that both of us, we are sharing the, one of the oldest history. As well, we are sharing one very important part in our history pages, which is our language. Georgia has the unique language and unique manuscript. You see here our manuscripts and the language and churches and Christianity, some a big history pages behind us, and Georgia's language is among the oldest 14 languages in the planet. Korean language as well is the oldest language and among the 14th languages, but among the 14th, Korean language is the youngest. This is uh, the uh, fact according to the scientists and uh, we are very proud of it, like you. And that's why that I think that the notion that Georgia geographically stands in the very important uh, crossroad like a Korean peninsula. Because uh, throughout these centuries, both of our nations, we are fighting for the peace. Both of us, we are surrounded by the big empires. And both of us, we are fighting for our independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, and for and the most for our language. That's why that we Georgians say, saying that Georgia survived because its language. And we think that Korea survived because its language as well. And this is some kind of remedy of uh, our nations and I founding deeply 
very big similarities between of the survival and between of the notion how we cherish the peace. This is the small explanation of uh, our countries. Uh, last now I will stretch back all 8,000 years and I will go to the 20th century, which is uh, very hectic uh, in your history pages, in our history pages as well, and how the world was evolving and uh, developing at that time. Uh, after the First World War, Georgia has been uh, occupied at the time by the Russian Empire. And uh, Georgia got finally independence from the Russian Empire. It was 1918. And the last year we have celebrated 100 years of the Georgia's first democratic republic. It was very important uh, anniversary for us and each of our citizens. And we have celebrated this year in, uh, in Korea as well, uh, in very loudly, I could say, because that we have lighted up uh, the uh, mayor's office in Seoul City. Uh, it was very interesting and to, uh, to see uh, your mayor's office and with our flag colors. It was very nice, frankly speaking. And we had some concerts and some cultural activities as well to celebrate and to show the Korean people uh, the Georgia's uh, progress and the history. Uh, I could very proudly could say this is the declaration of independence. There are some countries who has recognized the Georgian independence at that time, including Russian Empire. Including them as well. But uh, it was very short-lived independence to us. Because uh, you cannot see the Korea as well, because the, the, the Korea was under the occupation at that time. Uh, very short-lived, because in 1921, our statehood has been again uh, occupied by the Red Army, and Georgia entered to the Soviet Union bloc. Some people are saying, and when they see the Georgians, some people here, they're starting speaking with me in Russian, or they are thinking that we are some of the part of the Russia, but it's a very big mistake. We've never been the part of the Russia, and we don't have any cultural relations with Russia. We have been under the occupation of Russia. This is it. Only this, and, uh, this notion of the Soviet Union, that uh, the old countries are the same, is very wrong. And uh, our, uh, this is speaking from the small country perspectives. I think that uh, it's my duty to tell the stories about these issues. How and uh, how why Georgia was? Uh, we are so proud of our first constitution and first uh, uh, democratic republic because that it was very rare to meet in the planet, even in the Western civilizations that we had the six. Uh, five sorry, the ladies in our parliament. Can you imagine in 1921, even in the very developed European uh, countries, the women did not have to write of voting, even for the voting. So we had already deputies, congresswomen in our parliament. This is very important pages of the showing the democracy, how the Georgia was building democracy from its hands at that time. And plus, it's not only that we have only five women. Most important, we had the first Muslim women in the Christian soil, the member of the parliament. And late. Even nowadays, it's very rare to find in that type of uh, 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 situations in some countries. I cannot say the old country, but in some countries. We managed to make it in the 1918. Uh, that's why that it was very important, and this is from our uh, constitution. It's handwriting. It says that citizens of the both genders are eligible to vote in the elections of the Constituent Assembly as well. And it has been done and written in our constitution. Which is the 9th April and why 1989? This is the very historical date for us and very important in our recent history. 9th of April, 
was the first high acclaimed and I could say very high volume say that we don't want to live in the USSR and we would like to abandon the USSR. The 9th of April is the day when the first crack of the USSR started. And it was in Georgia. That's why that the Russians still not swallowing this uh, uh, piece of uh, democracy uh, because that because of these events, what's happened in 9th of April, exactly 30 years ago, we had the anniversary just recently, and I gave the, my interview in the Korean Times, just uh, the article issued yesterday, uh, about these uh, activities, that at that time the Soviet army entered in Georgian territory. It was, of course, that uh, mastermind by the Kremlin. The Russians was behind it because that they did not want to see any rebellion country among the Soviet Union. And uh, on that night, I was there as well on this manifestation. I was young at that time, but I was there. I left at 1 a.m. with my parents, but some of my parents and relatives, they left, uh, they've been there on the streets because that whole country was, uh, uh, was in the manifestation. And Russian tanks entered in the major you know, thoroughness of the city, in the capital, like a Guantanamo Street, in the major. And they uh, uh, spread uh, the uh, still today under the UN Convention prohibited uh, uh, CS. It's called CS, but uh, at that time it called CS poison and they poisoned more than 4,000 persons to depress the, uh, the manifestation and killed 21 uh, persons, among 21, 16 women. And among 16 women, most of them, they been 16, 17, and 18 years old. That was the first call of the collapse of the USSR. All nations, of the around the USSR parties, they started their movements. It went to the Latvia in the Baltic states, it went in the Azerbaijan as well, and so on and so forth. And 1991, uh, USSR has been collapsed, and Georgia declared independence. This is the very important point, and that was the declaration that Georgia does not want to live uh, in the sphere of the influence of the Kremlin, and we would like to choose our future by ourselves, and we would like to be independent, and we, it's up to us who we choose. And that time it has been declared that Georgia, uh, in spite it's not about the government, people declared itself that our historic part is the European Union. This is the story is about. Maybe I started from the back, but it's very important why we came today there. And uh, in the 9th of April, the manifestation slogans was like this, that we don't want a USSR, we would like to be uh, independent, and we would like to be in the European civilization. That was the first, uh, the first manifestos there. There are some pictures how the tanks and soldiers entered, like it's very touchy moments for me personally as well. And uh, then after, on the second day, what was the most important that uh, we have uh, organized uh, at that time the elections. And 90% uh, of the population turnout was there. 90% is very high, including now so-called uh, the occupation territories. I will explain a little bit. I don't want to speak about only these issues today because this is the European lecture. And, uh, but this is the very important part of us. And uh, all population of Georgia was against of the Soviet Union. And all of us, we declared in one vote that Georgia should be independent. Everything started, collapse of the USSR started from Georgia. This is the 9th of April, and this is a very interesting point for all of you to understand and answer this question to you. If somebody will make some research deep what was happening in our part of the countries. This is Georgia itself. We made it in Korea. Uh, 
map. Uh, the territory is 70,000 square meters, uh, border to border, frankly speaking, five hours to drive the car, but this uh, small uh, piece of land with a lot of diversity inside. Because in the tourism-wise, you can ski and swim in one day, you could meet with the uh, from the nine, eight climate zone, including the subtropical zone, plus uh, you could uh, uh, meet the divers of the cuisine, which we are very proud of it, and with the wine, and with uh, fantastic nature. This is everything what is Georgia proposing for. What is the red? This is the occupied territory. This is Abkhazia and South Ossetia, which is under the control of the Russia of the uh, separatists, uh, baked by the separatist movements, by them and still today we, we are fighting for the peace and to regain and reunite our uh, uh, historical places and uh, to get back to uh, Georgia. I'm not going to, if you will have some questions, then we will speak about these issues later. Now I would like to go to our another slide, which is the Georgian Europeization which is the most important part of our foreign policy and uh, for the fulfill the call of the population. Because till today, according to the latest census, 83% of the Georgian population, or 86, is uh, the pro-European and pro-Euro-Atlantic integration, which is the NATO. Uh, and then another minority uh, just wants to be independent and very few wants to be in the Russian bloc, which is like a zero, zero, some percent. Very few. Very few. This is what, what has been started and where we are standing in the 27 years. So being behind having so big pressure and uh, being under the influence of the big empires, because the Georgia, on the other hand, of course, I was making focus on the Russian Federation, but on the other part, our neighbors are Turkey, which is behind, it was the Ottoman Empire, which was the very strong and uh, very interesting nation in history, and the Iran, on the other part as well. I think that, uh, uh, geographically speaking, we are not in the best place of the world in terms to say that how we could survive during these 8,000 years is another miracle. Uh, because we are 3.500 million. We are a very small country. But in, in this small country, I think we are producing very important politicians in the history pages of the world. <laughs> I, and uh, today's our Europeization is uh, that in 2014 we have signed uh, the Deep and Comprehensive Free Trade Agreement with the European Union. To sign that type of agreement, of course, that we needed crucial reforms, which is the, uh, till today, I'm saying as my motto personal, the reform should be irreversible, because the being the post-Soviet country, which we are not calling anymore, ourselves that the post-Soviet, because this is Georgia, and we are calling now the more pro-European country, which is the very, we are ahead even some Eastern European countries in terms of the uh, fighting with the corruption and uh, fighting with the crime, because the Georgia today is the one of the most safest country in the planet. That's why that Georgia is receiving the more than 9 million tourists we received last year. That means that 1% receives three tourists. Almost, and we are going to, to raise this issue. Without the safety, it's impossible. Besides that we have so big challenge and having the Russian soldiers on our soul and having these occupied territories in our part, we are managing to break through and make Georgia as developed as possible. Of course, we have a lot of challenges. Uh, we are uh, our major and our generation major task is to build this strong democratical institution. This is the irreversible. Georgia, uh, what we have achieved in these 27 years, that Georgia after the Baltic states, only one country in the post-Soviet era that who managed to conduct the uh, free parliamentarian and presidential elections and the local elections, only us. Maybe you could see, think that it's uh, so easy for you because that you are making these 50 years, but believe me, it's very big achievement. 
because that in this uh, under this big influence, like uh, to build this democratic institution in this uh, very very fragile atmosphere is very difficult, and it's in our hands to keep up and going, and that's why that I'm saying that reform should be reversible. That's why that in the four years ago, European Union recognized the Georgian strivings of the free world and the free will to become uh, the closer to the European values and the dimension. This is the most important. It's not about just only the integration in the bloc. Maybe while the moment will come, European Union will not be existing. This is another question. But on the other perspectives, like uh, why Georgia is fighting to get there, and what is the purpose if you, in the beginning, know the, you don't know the, what will be the future, this is the answer. We are fighting for the values. This is the values are uh, uniting us. This is democracy who is uniting us. And this is the, our major perspectives. And that's why the that European Union reciprocated and we uh, we've been the only country with Moldova and Ukraine. That was, of course, the political decision at the time. Uh, and uh, Georgia received the uh, deep and free trade comprehensive, uh, signed the association agreement. And uh, part of it is the deep and comprehensive free trade agreement and plus visa-free regime, which means that uh, on what was happened afterwards, that was that Russia took Crimea from Ukraine and uh, uh, made the same scenario what they did in 2008 uh, with Georgia while they've been invaded Georgia and we had a uh, five-day war with Russia and they occupied our territories. That was the same because that, that was some kind of uh, uh, response from the Kremlin uh, to they called their backyards, the old Soviet bloc countries that if you be, not behave how I want, then I will punish you, like in the simple way. The, this, is, this is the response and this, but without this, besides these challenges, of course that our major strive is to get there and to reach this benchmark, what is in our priority, which is of course that uh, making Georgia as much as European country and as much as closer to the NATO. Uh, what uh, the perspectives what we have received from the uh, um, accession of, of the deep and uh, comprehensive free trade agreement? We have uh, drafted the roadmap to Europe, which is the, till the 2020. In uh, each of the Eastern Partnership countries, you saw the logo uh, before we have started uh, our uh, lecture today. What is the Eastern Partnership? Eastern Partnership is the part of the European neighboring policy dimension, which unites uh, six countries from the post-Soviet uh, uh, countries and one of them is Georgia. But in these six countries, some of the countries choose its European uh, future, but some of them not. But still, it's very effective uh, uh, tool uh, to get closer to the European Union for everybody. And this year, we are marking the 10 years of uh, celebration of the Eastern Partnership. Uh, in the Eastern Partnership, I could say that uh, our major ambition is the, to make uh, the more for more. Which means that if the Georgia is making more reforms is, uh, and severe reforms and getting closer to the European Union, it should receive more from the European Union and not to be equal to the other countries who choose other uh, political uh, uh, future which is not coincides uh, to us or even to the European uh, policy. Uh, what's after the uh, DCFTA, what was the most tangible results? That, uh, that was that Georgia became the uh, part of the uh, European energy uh, community member. And plus, we have signed the uh, Paris Ag Climate Paris Agreement. Which is, uh, which is very important like it, uh, to get closer uh, pragmatically and sectorally with the European Union. 
that was our, in these four years, so we managed to make it. And uh, what is uh, till 2020, then 2018, last year, that in Georgia it has been opened first European school. It's very important to say here in this building because that education is the one of the core priority of us because that with this uh, European uh, Union school, which means that this is the degrees are equal, what is in the European Union, everything is equal, and the, all the Eastern Partnership countries passing the curricula with the same like in the European Union major uh, and advanced universities. And this has been opened with the uh, big support of the, itself, the European Union, and Georgia became some kind of educational hub of the Eastern Partnership countries, which means that in the uh, big picture, what we have seen that investing in education, this is the number one priority. And that's how the, we see our values in the future. And that's why that it has been uh, Georgia chosen from those countries among the Eastern Partnership countries as a recipient to have that type of big grant and uh, present, I could say, to have the type of school in our soul. This is some kind of uh, picture of how we should do this 2020 Daniel level. So, of course, this is transparency. Uh, uh, this is the uh, pragmatic approach for the security issues and on the other hand as well to make uh, our reforms uh, even uh, higher than, uh, association and, uh, than the association agreement is obliging us. Which means that we are trying to be the pioneer among the Eastern Partnership countries. What is Georgia is about today? And who we are? Georgia has managed in these 27 years, of course, that while we are fighting for our Europeization and the Euro Atlantic uh, aspiration, on the other hand, economy plays a crucial role. It's, if we will make the parallel, I could say maybe it's not very close, but what was the Hunger Miracle in the 80s? In the in Korea, uh, in the Republic of Korea, we are passing the same pages right now. Georgia has been opened for the world as the most liberal economy. Georgia is the number six of the uh, easing of doing business in the world according to the World Bank. Uh, Korea is number five. Can you imagine like that we are, you are a G20 country? You are the 12th economy in the world, but the small Georgia, which is, was only 27 years ago, the one of the most corrupted and the most part of the most brutal regime in the communist regime, managed to be today the number six. Of course, that it's our population, it's not only government, this is the will of the, each of citizen of the Georgia. And uh, what we have made, we have managed that Georgia today is the most liberal economy, uh, least corrupted. I would like to emphasize this issue because it is very important. Uh, and most open for the business and register the business in Georgia. You can open up the business in Georgia in 15 minutes and get the licenses in 10 minutes. To get the passport, you need only 30 seconds. Uh, in some spaces, we are ahead of Korea. We, we have we done so many things. We are trying to a little bit Singapurize our economy because the Georgia stands in the crossroads of the Europe and Asia. Through us, we are part of the Silk Road in some way, and uh, it's not some way, but in the one way. But on the other way, we are trying to diversify our roots as much as we can because we don't want to hang of another hegemony, which is China. We know the China's diplomacy. We know how. China could swallow us immediately uh, with its policy, but we are trying to be as open and invite as many stakeholders as possible on our soil. And to be the most transparent, because the Georgia is the transit route uh, all from the Central Asia and the Asian itself, now I will show you the map, through the European Union. Uh, this is uh, the world map. 
You could see the Georgian. That's why, sorry, I will take the buzzer. Uh, it should uh, have a laser. Here is, but this uh -huh. You see, here is the Georgian. Here we are right now, and what is the connection, maybe you could say, but there is a very big connection to the world. Because the, through this, Georgia is the only country now, this is the Russia, all this big machine, uh, and uh, from here in China as well, and to get the European market and the get to the world from this part of the world, Georgia is uh, giving the option to diversify the routes from there, which is the making today's existing routes 40% uh, shorter than now what the world is using. That's why that one of the biggest logistic hub is going to construct in the Black Sea. Uh, and uh, this transit route gives us the ability uh, which is, we have already very interesting projects, starting from Azerbaijan. Uh, 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 oils are transferring from Georgia uh, through the Europe, uh, to the Europe uh, with Turkey as well, and uh, uh, plus the energy. Georgia is the country where we have the, after the Amazonian basin, one of the biggest resources of the water in the planet. We have 28,000 rivers starting and ending in Georgia. This is another, we can call the white gold, or I don't know, something like that, white, white oil or something, which is going to have a very big future after 50 years. But uh, any, there is a Turkey, there is Iran, there is other, Russia, neither of these states having so big resources of water. Only Georgia has it, and that's why that we have the, you know, developed and managed to have the middle-sized, uh, 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 hydropower plants uh, in Georgia, which is the one of the most biggest recipients in the Korean company, which is the K Water, which has been invested uh, five years ago, one billion two hundred million, and the one of the biggest uh, representative uh, in the energy sector in our region as a whole. Uh, with this uh, uh, plus, what the Georgia managed in these years of uh, well, getting the deep and uh, uh, free, deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with European Union, Georgia managed to have the free trade agreements with the 52 countries around the world, including the CIS countries, EFTA countries, Turkey, Ukraine, EU, plus China and Hong Kong. It's very rare to meet the country who has the free trade agreement with European Union and the China simultaneously for our, uh, from our part of the world. Even you cannot say it, uh, real, it's only us. Just uh, now we are trying to have very interesting uh, uh, exchanges with the Republic of Korea. I think that I could remind again uh, your Excellencies, professors, regarding the Hunger Miracle. That's why that in the 80s, the Korea started with its open and liberalized its economy and having the free trade agreements rest out, out of the world, which received the benefits, of course, after 22 decades. Now I will go a little bit to the, from the harsh historical pages and the European dimension and uh, uh, economical uh, points. Now I will enter again, as I have said, I promised I will speak about a little bit Georgian wine and Korea-Georgia relations, which is very important as well uh, for me as a being ambassador and for you as an uh, audience participants. This is the, uh, uh, I think it should remind you something, but if it's not, I will show you later another slide that uh, this jar will remind you something. Because uh, this is the jar, what you have seen, this is the exhibition, uh, has been organized, I think, two years ago in Bordeaux. It was the Human Civilization uh, exhibition of the wine making, and which is proved that 8,000 years ago, these vessels have been found in Georgia. 
and the, when the human being first find the podo, then make the juice from podo and uh, get uh, the drunk from this liquor, it was in juice. And uh, the fermentation process itself, which received the UNESCO Intangible Heritage uh, uh, on the 2013, uh, then uh, we, the same commission gave the kimjak making uh, the Intangible Heritage Acclamation as well. And why it happened on the same day and the, what the relations Korea and Georgia has it, I will tell you. This is the uh, uh, Georgian jar we are calling Quevery. This is how uh, this is how it's buried under the beneath and the sole is around one ton, two tons, three tons, uh, three tons, and uh, you know, we are putting there uh, our grapes. Georgia has 500 indigenous uh, 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 grapes in Georgia. And from these 500 indigenous grapes, so we are making more than 300 different wines. Each in the 70,000 uh, square meters, each small winning village has its own wine. And even inside the village, the different uh, two houses having different type of wines. And that means that in our DNA, this is the wine. Like is in the, uh, your DNA is kimchi. <laughs> uh -huh. This is to became my favorite page. <coughs> this happened in the one day in 2013. On the same day, same time, same commission, and same people decided to make it happen. And there it, I made this research by myself. Like a professor is researching some materials, I was researching the materials how to make the Georgia and Korea closer to each other. And I found this type of uh, very interesting point in our uh, uh, relations. Uh, why this is the jar, and this is our jar. This look alike, yes? That's what I told you in the first picture, that it's, it should remind you something. And uh, why it's happened on the same day? The very the, uh, simple explanation, because one, the both of our nations are the oldest nations in the planet, that for some kind of prelude of, uh, of the uh, decision makers who made uh, this decision to make it happen. On the other hand, both of uh, this is the nature products, which one is grape, another is cabbage, and both of us we are putting in the clay vessels under the beneath, and both of us waiting for the fermentation process. Just we have been uh, a little bit smart enough to make it wine, and you've been making it. <laughs> but anyway, both of it. Then I will tell you how the wine goes to the kimchi. It's uh, another story. Uh, this is our national dresses. Georgia is full of, of course, we we'll having behind so big history. Of course, we have fantastic folk, fantastic dance, uh, or then our national dresses. And you could see uh, this is the same uh, themes has been taken, like to show you, like to demonstrate who we are. And uh, this is the cuisine. Uh, I love Korean cuisine. I'm a big fan of your cuisine, and I, I could say that this is the most organic lunches in the world. Uh, and uh, the, what is the most important to so see the people and to understand the people, first you should see the cuisine. When the cuisine is rich, these people having very big history. It's not my words, it's proof. And both of us, we are having the same tradition of having the feast. For instance, in Georgia we have more than 100 dishes, like you, pancha, everything like you. But it's different. Different, uh, maybe you could a little bit, uh, uh, you could uh, see this is called look like mandus, but uh, taste is totally different and better. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but I would say. I would really say, uh, 
who tasted this is proved. <laughs> it's called Hinkali, actually. Uh, and this is our our bunch. Uh, uh, what is the most important? That we have the same tradition. When the elder is uh, sitting on the table, first elder is eating, and then rest of it. When the elder is sitting on the table, the elder speaks first, and the rest of the table. We don't have any relations between each other. We are geographically very far, but so big similarities in our uh, uh, culture, I think that this became the one of the remedy that Korean tourism becoming daily basis uh, uh, developing uh, 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 from Korea to Georgia. I will, I will give you some uh, uh, census. Uh, 2012, we had only 1,600 persons visited from Korea to Georgia. Last year, we had uh, almost 14,000. We have 400 percent rise. This year, we are expecting around 20,000. After one, uh, after after uh, one month, we are going to have the first direct charter flights from Incheon to Tbilisi by the Korean Air, which means that and we will have the fantastic TV show, please watch in the KBS, very soon. Uh, will be uh, the uh, Food Odyssey, there is a program, very, very uh, important uh, uh, celebrity is making this program, and I am working on this issue as well in terms of the public diplomacy to bring the Korea and Georgia more closer together. And uh, I think that it has a very big uh, future in terms of our development. And I will recommend one day to visit my country. Thank you so much. I will stop here because that I covered in my time frame everything what has been possible. Thank you.